Welcome back, I'm Sean from T2R, and today we're filming episode two of our all-wheel drive J-Swap EG project. All right, so in the last episode, we worked on taking the rear end off of the car. We got all the brake lines and all that good stuff off. We still continue to take more stuff off the car. We had the fuel lines and a couple other things we needed to remove, but for the most part, we're gonna go ahead and get the rear end mounted. I mean, see what else we can get done. Hey, I'm JP. I'm a CNC operator and builder here at P2R Racing. Today we have the EG and we're going to be going ahead and getting ready to mock up um, the rear diff plate just so that way we can go ahead and make the notches in order to get the proper clearance so that way everything passes through and mounts up the way it's supposed to. We got all, our, all the hardware out of the holes here. We could actually just kind of post set this up and as you can see we have to go ahead and notch this out so we can get our clearance to get this bracket to clear and then our holes will also clear up as well. We have our marks here, so now we just have to go ahead and notch this out so we can move forward. I hate doing this. I really <laughs> hate this. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eduardo Morales. Um, I do a lot of the welding and fabricating here at P2R. Um, I'm gonna be cutting out the lower brace here and get this all mocked up and get it ready for fitment. <laughs> So now that we have this notched out, before we try and box or weld this in, um, we're obviously going to set everything up, make sure everything fits properly. Um, another thing that we run into is that the diff will want to hit here before um, setting it up. So instead of what some people do is cut this out and make another hole or box this in too, we're just going to bump this up, hit it up a little bit just to clear the diff with no problems. So we went ahead, we cut that out as you've seen, and then real quick as we are getting ready to go ahead and start putting the pieces on the diff, there's a little step you can kind of actually see on this part a little bit. So what we had to do, just for clearance so this can actually fit perfectly in the holes aligned, we had just had to notch it a little bit so that way the bracket. will actually go right up. And as you can see, our bolt holes are all ready to go. And I'll just get this mocked up and then we'll go ahead and snug things down before we fit it into the car. All right. So now that we got that nice and set, we'll go ahead and take our spacers for the upper mount. And we have these little shims here that also go ahead and give it that proper spacing. If you want to hold that for you. And so these ones we'll go ahead and we We'll snug them a little bit, but we want the plate to stay a little loose, just so that way when we actually mock this up underneath the car, if we have to slide it forward or backwards, we can go ahead and do so as needed. So now that we got these pretty much, uh, we got this bar all mounted in, we got this one ready to go. Now we'll actually switch over and get this set up into the back of the vehicle. <laughs> we'll go ahead and get this on the jack and then yeah, yeah, I mean, first we'll uh, get everything marked up, ready to go here. We're gonna leave that a little bit loose um, just so we can uh, mount it and move it around to mark the holes. Next thing we gotta do is uh, drill the holes for the, the brace. And in order to do that, we're gonna install the back, um, tighten it down. We're gonna get the lower control arms in at the same time so that we don't have to take it back out because this is the unit we're gonna be using. So we'll mock it up right now, we'll put it on the jack to lift it up into place to hold it there while we drill the bottom two holes out and mark the top so we can put the uh, rib nuts in. Right. 
You just tell me if you need me to just go forward or back a little bit. Okay. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Right, we'll bring her up. Yep. Just hold that. Um, roll back, back a little bit. I'm gonna move the weight forward. Alrighty. Yep. Perfect. Okay. You good? good? Yep. Everything's looking good. Hold that. There we go. Try to push forward towards the front of the car. Just, oh, nope. How's that looking on your side? You may have to, oh, it's hitting the, uh, the, the night, trunk. It just has to be trimmed a little bit. The, and it's hitting the trunk over here on this bracket. See um, the bottom side of this? So that just has we, to be dimpled we, in a little more. Yep. Uh, okay. Is the paint pen over here? Here, I might be able to not get that for you. You may have to smash it a little bit to get the paint to come out. Which we expected. We kind of... A little bit more. I think, uh, I mean, it's, it's touching. Oh, no, it's not. Let, let me see if, because if I push up on this, it touches. Oh, 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 here. Where are you? It, it's going to have, um, I'm almost at the bolt hole. I have to go up. I'm in the bolt hole. Okay. And it's touching the body. See that one little Right there, yeah. under you, right in the knockout, no, it's a, no, the, or the the tub. The break is, yeah, it's a tub. Okay, because this is gonna have to go up in the front another cool half an inch. Why keep hitting? Yep, and then hit too much. Uh, right now we're just uh, loading up this, uh, mounting up this rear brace with the lower control arms in here, and then we have to come up here and mount this top brace that holds the diff. So we're gonna move this brace up a little bit. It's still loose so we can move it around until we get it in place. So we can drill the holes to mount it onto the frame. All right, while those guys are in the back of the car working on getting the rear end set up, I went ahead and mounted the FCS raised tubular lower control arm. I mean, that thing's quite a bit lighter than the factory piece that comes out. I mean, this is, Got some weight on it, that's nice and light. I'm also putting in their um, tubular lower shock fork, which is gonna basically make swapping the axles on this car a lot easier. Uh, basically servicing the car at the track is gonna be very easy with this whole setup. That's kind of why I wanted to get this on the car here. All right, so we got the diff. Uh, the back plate's all mounted in securely. And then what me and Eddie did, we went ahead and made sure that the bar was balanced from left to right. And then we went ahead and made our mark. So now we actually have our marking to where the brackets has to go back to. And then we also have our drill holes actually all marked so we can go ahead and start to pre-drill the, 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 the holes out for the bracket. And then we can go ahead and get our nut certs installed. Once the nut certs are installed, we could actually bring this back down, do anything that, that we may have to do around that, uh, sway bar and stuff like that, and then we could actually go ahead and get this fastened uh, permanent. Beautiful.
No, nut certs are all good. Let's get it. We got our holes drilled out. We got our nut certs installed. Got everything uh, pretty much cut, trimmed, shaved as needed. And now we are going ahead and just uh, raise it a little more. No, hold it. So we're gonna go ahead and can uh, continue to, to raise the diff back into place and we're gonna actually get it fully fastened this time around to where we can actually leave it in the vehicle. Which way? Front of the car? Yeah. How's that? No. I'm on, I'm on this one. Uh, let me get the start one. Progress and everything is going quite well. I mean, there's little things that were kind of, that's kind of holding us up, but like, for example, the rear differential needs axle seals. So it doesn't make sense for us to stick the axles in to pull that right back out. So we're gonna go ahead and leave the axles out. Front is pretty much done. We're working on pressing in the ball joint. Once that's done, I mean, we should be able to put the knuckles back on. So progress is going really well. Starting to get a little cold, even though it's South Florida. But hey, we're gonna work through it. So now we got our, our front spindles out. We obviously had to take out our old ball joints as they were no good, and we're gonna be switching over to these ones. And we're gonna go ahead, and me and Eddie are gonna grease these up and get them pressed in. snap ring in there to lock that back on and we're all set. So we're, we're just about to wrap up the project here. We gotta finish one side of putting the, uh, the rear uh, control arm, the lower control arm, uh, the knuckle and the spindle back on. We're gonna hook everything up and uh, then we're gonna get ready to lower it back down to the ground. I'm gonna tighten those up a little bit just to give me a little more. Do all the way down on these. This ratchet's got an extra special feature too where you only gotta just turn the handle. Yeah, where you don't have much swing. Oh, look at it. Look how beautiful. Beautiful black skin. He's looking at his opponent in pure angst and hunger. Will he attack? Find out next.
right, overall it was quite a productive day. We got the all-wheel drive conversion on the car all finished up. Uh, just a couple little knickknacks we gotta do. Um, next round on episode three of the all-wheel drive EG build, we're gonna go ahead and start prepping to get the J engine in the car. If you guys enjoy watching our progress on the JSwap all-wheel drive EG project, please go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be up to date and be informed when we drop a new video, whether it's on this or any of our other various projects we got going on here at P2R. Uh, you can follow us on social media at PowerRevRacing or on our website, PowerRevRacing.com. I'll see you guys again soon.